Hey everyone, you're listening to Concentrate with Dr. T, a podcast discussing cannabis science and business. This podcast is published on YouTube and Spotify. Please follow me on Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Discord. The information can be found in the description below. Please like and comment with any questions about cannabis you have. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome back to Concentrates with Dr. T. Today, we're going to wrap up our series introducing you to some of the most common cannabis extraction methods. Let's get right to it. Next, we'll talk about using butter to extract marijuana. This classic method leverages the lipophilic or fat-loving nature of butter to extract the cannabinoids from cannabis. The main point of using butter is to infuse it with active cannabinoids and then further use the butter in recipes such as brownies, cookies, pancakes, or wherever else butter is used to make it easy and delicious to consume conveniently dosed amounts of active compound. This method is used as an intermediate step to producing cannabis edibles commercially, and it has been a staple recipe in hippie kitchens everywhere for generations. The result of extracting cannabis with butter is often known as cannabutter, which is butter infused with cannabis. The process of butter extraction is relatively simple and can be done at home with minimal equipment. To make cannabutter, the first step is to decarboxylate the cannabis. This is a process where the marijuana is heated in an oven to activate the compounds in the plant. I'll give more information about this process in another episode. Once the cannabis has been decarboxylated, it is then mixed with butter in a saucepan and gently heated for a few hours to ensure complete extraction. The mixture is then strained to remove the plant material, leaving behind a butter that has been infused with the desired compounds from marijuana. The can of butter can then be stored and used to make a wide variety of edibles, including cookies, brownies, and even macaroni and cheese. However, there are also some downsides to butter extraction. One of the biggest downsides is that it can be less efficient than other methods, resulting in a final product that contains a lower concentration of desired compounds. Additionally, butter extraction can be a time-consuming process requiring a bit of patience. If done incorrectly, the resulting butter can be unappealing to the eye and nose, let alone the taste buds. Despite these concerns, butter extraction remains a popular method of extracting marijuana compounds. This is partly due to the fact that it is considered one of the most accessible, tasty, and safe methods of extraction, and also because it can produce a wide range of edibles, making it a fun and creative way of consuming cannabis. Butter isn't the only edible fat that can be used to extract the active compounds from cannabis. Many different plant oils can be used, including coconut oil, olive oil, and MCT oil, which is itself refined coconut oil. The process of oil extraction is essentially the same as the process for making can of butter, and can be done at home with minimal equipment. The first step is to decarboxylate the cannabis, which is a process where the marijuana is heated in an oven to activate the compounds in the plant. Once the cannabis has been decarboxylated, it is then mixed with the carrier oil in a saucepan and heated on low for a period of time, usually a few hours, to make sure all of the target compounds have been extracted. The mixture is then strained to remove the plant material, leaving behind an oil that has been infused with the desirable compounds from the marijuana. This oil can then be used to make a wide variety of edibles including salad dressings, sauces, and even mayonnaise. Some people prefer oil extraction over butter extraction, as it is a vegan option. However, there are also some downsides to oil extraction. One of the biggest drawbacks is that it can be less efficient than other methods, resulting in a final product that contains a lower concentration of desired compounds. Additionally, oil extraction can be time-consuming. Like with butter extraction, 
Doing this wrong can result in oils that are strong in color, odor, and unpleasant flavors. Besides using fats like butter and olive oil to extract cannabis, you can also use plain old water. How does this work? Water extraction is the process of separating the desirable compounds from marijuana plants using ice water and agitation. The process freezes the cannabis plant material and the agitation causes the trichomes, which contain the cannabinoids, to break off into the water bath. The separated trichomes are then collected to create an extract known as water hash or bubble hash. One of the main benefits of water extraction is that it produces a pure and potent final product that doesn't involve the use of any solvents or heat. The trichomes collected through this process are essentially free of structural plant matter, resulting in a high quality product that is rich in THC and other cannabinoids if present. Another advantage of water extraction is that it can be done relatively easily at home with minimal equipment. However, it is important to note that the process can be time consuming and requires a bit of patience to do it right. Water extraction is also considered to be a low yield method of extraction, resulting in a final product that contains a lower concentration of cannabinoids compared to other methods. Since they are not further separated from the trichome structures, Additionally, water extraction is more susceptible to microbial contamination than the other extraction methods I've already talked about. For this reason, immunocompromised individuals should not consume homemade bubble hash of any kind and should only consider consuming bubble hash that has been tested for microbial contamination at state licensed testing laboratories. There are much better options for such individuals, however. Despite these downsides, water extraction remains a popular method among marijuana enthusiasts. This is partly because it is considered a more sustainable and natural method of extraction. We've talked about many different extraction methods so far that all have one thing in common. They use a solvent of some sort to remove the cannabinoids from the marijuana plant. By contrast, heat press extraction, also known as rosin press, is a method that uses heat and pressure to extract a terpene-rich cannabis wax from bubble hash. The process begins by placing bubble hash between two heated plates. The heat and pressure causes the cannabinoids, terpenes, and other oils to melt and flow onto the plates. The resulting extract is collected and is commonly packaged by the gram in parchment paper to be consumed by inhalation. One of the main benefits of heat press extraction is that it is considered to result in a safe extract free from all residual solvents. The heat press can also be used with fresh plants to make terpene and flavor rich live resin. Another advantage of heat press extraction is that it can be done relatively easily with minimal inexpensive equipment. Many heat press machines are designed for home use. In fact, hair straighteners have been used by some to perform a similar process at home. On the other hand, this method will be difficult to scale up for large-scale production. It will always have a place in the market, but will never make up the majority of concentrate sales in any market that also allows the use of solvents to extract cannabis. The main hazard associated with working with the heat press is being burned by the hot surfaces. Despite this, heat press extraction continues to generate a buzz among marijuana enthusiasts. Its solvent-free nature and tasty extracts make it an appealing choice. Finally, I'm going to wrap up this episode by talking about some other solvents that have been used to extract cannabis, but that I would recommend against in almost all cases. Let's get into it. Some of the other chemicals that you can find reference to their use as marijuana extraction solvents include isopropyl alcohol, also known as rubbing alcohol, hexane, the major component of gasoline, heptane, methanol, and acetone. Some of these solvents are more likely than others to leave residuals, such as isopropyl alcohol and heptane. In all cases, the residual solvents are quite toxic. For example, hexane is a known neurotoxin and methanol is the highly toxic chemical in bad moonshine that causes blindness so they should never be used to extract cannabis intended for human consumption and ideally never be used to process cannabis products. 
Certainly none of these solvents should be attempted to be used to extract cannabis at home. If these solvents have a place at all in cannabis extraction and processing, they should be used by professionals in adequately built facilities only. For example, methanol is commonly used as an inexpensive solvent for processing cannabis samples for potency analysis and testing laboratories. This is a perfectly acceptable use. On the other hand, I've seen heptane used to denature food grade ethanol and avoid ethanol taxes. This is a terrible idea as heptane should never be used in a cannabis extraction process. There are other better and safer choices that can be made to avoid expensive ethanol taxes. Contact me for more information and for help selecting the best process for your business. It's important to note that each method for cannabis extraction has its own unique sets of benefits and drawbacks. And it's important to consider your specific needs and goals when choosing a method of extraction for your business. Additionally, it's essential to be aware of the laws and regulations in your area, as many places have strict rules about the production and sale of marijuana products, or even how those products are created. Reach out to me for more information, help with choosing an extraction method for your business, equipment selection, and more. That wraps up this series of episodes about cannabis extraction methods. Reach out to me for more information, help with choosing an extraction method for your business, equipment selection, and more. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed. See you next week. Peace.